All right, what is going on guys? So today we're gonna to be doing the M50 manifold conversion on my 97 M3. So the M50 manifold conversion is one of the best horsepower per dollar modifications you can do to an M52 or an S52 engine. The OBD1 M50 S50 E36s had 60% larger intake runners on their manifolds. Now putting one of these manifolds onto an M52 or an S52 is an easy gain of 15-ish horsepower around there on a stock tune but you are trading high intake volume for intake velocity at the lower rpms you will be losing a little bit of torque on a stock tune with an aftermarket tune like dynan and rk tunes i believe they have m50 na tunes i'm running a castle performance tune which is also optimized for the m50 on this motor setup with this tune there should be basically no torque loss and with the tune it'll give you even more power gains up top so the M50 manifold swap does really change the characteristics of these engines. Especially at higher altitudes at the high RPM, the M52s with the stock manifolds like to choke. And they just don't get enough airflow to really breathe at the high RPMs with the factory manifold. And so the M50 manifold swap really brings out the top end of these motors. There's not a whole lot you can do to these NA motors as far as power gains go without really starting to spend some money on it. Cams start around $1,000. A proper exhaust setup somewhere around the same and even a high performance intake manifold system like the RSD ITB kit started around a thousand dollars so to pull some serious NA gains out of these motors, it is pretty expensive, but the M50 manifold is on the cheaper side. So today I'm gonna to be using an M50 manifold.com conversion kit. It's my personal favorite conversion kit. I've run them on my cars before. It's my favorite because it's a pretty simple bolt-on kit and it's significantly cheaper than the rest of them. So like your Turner Motorsport and ECS tuning kits start at mid 300s and I think they, some of them might even be closer to 400. The M50 manifold.com kit is just over 100 bucks for this diy we are going to be using the m50 manifold.com conversion kit so a couple things before we get started number one i am going to be starting the video with the intake manifold already removed i have an intake manifold removal video if you need that i will leave a link to that down in the description below we are not going to be covering removing the intake manifold we are just going to be focusing on the swap in addition to that there is a tiny little bit of fabrication that we will need to do to the manifold and a little bit to the fuel rail to make the adapter kit work it's not a lot and it's not hard a drill bit and a file will get you there we just need to cut a bracket up a little bit and shave some plastic as well as drill a few holes in the intake manifold to run vacuum lines and stuff like that. It's pretty simple, it's straightforward. On top of that, we're gonna be trying a little bit of a different DIY style. My typical DIYs are very cut and dry with static shots, so we're gonna incorporate a little bit of POV kind of style DIY into it. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this DIY format. All right, so first order of business with the M50 swap is taking the old intake manifold off. So especially if you've never pulled an intake manifold off, it can be quite over overwhelming at first take your time and take pictures of everything you disconnect before you start taking it apart so some good tips for you guys when you remove the oxygen sensors both sensors look the same so what you can do is put a zip tie around one and a zip tie around that connector and so you won't lose track of which one goes where also, there is a lot going on under the intake manifold, but it is a pretty simple system. We'll cover through that a little bit later. So we're gonna start by modifying the fuel rail first. You do need to trim part of the intake manifold in order to fit the adapter kit on there. And you can do this by putting the manifold in the car, but this fuel rail actually has quick connects. So doing that zip tie trick again, so I don't accidentally swap the fuel lines. If you take this connector, this little black part, push it in to itself, you can then pull it off of the fuel rail like that. So now we have our fuel rail completely disconnected from the car. We don't have to do with it or deal with it in the car. So one of the things we will need to do is remove the O2 sensor holder we're gonna to need to bend this bracket up because it's in the way of the mounts. So now you can see what I'm talking about. So that racket, that bracket is in the way. And you can also see what trimming we're gonna to need to have to do to get that to fit in nicely. So pretty rudimentary, I have a rusty file and uh, we're gonna make it work.
All right, so I've got the fuel rail adjusted, sitting roughly where I want it to be. You can get the fuel rail to sit level on both sides. That's about where you want it to be. Another good way to check is you can put an injector on each end of the rail. And if you can get both injectors to sit flush, then you're fine. See how that injector is sitting the way it should? As is that one. So now it's fitted well enough. So you can grind down the outer edge of both sides to get it to sit flush like this. That's what I did. Or you can just grind one side down heavily. I prefer to do it both because it makes it fit a little bit better in my opinion. So that is fitting properly. So I just took a file, it probably took me about half an hour just to grind down that side and then grind down the adjacent side. So we will be installing these brackets. They sit about like that. We will be installing them when we actually install the fuel rail. So the next order of business is going to be this guy here. So this is the secondary air injection system. It's a little purge solenoid. So I'm going to remove that from there. So for one, we don't need this bracket anymore. So if you pull back on this tab, you should be able to slide the bracket off and we don't need this. This, however, will need to sit right about there on the intake manifold. Because this little solenoid does plug into the fuel rail, we do need them on this side of it. So there's our first hole. So now I like to feed the vacuum line through and get an idea of where it's going to sit comfortably. You don't want to kink this line like that. You want to kind of have it bowed out a little bit, give them some room. So my second one's going to be maybe half an inch above that, something like that. Let's check fitment here. Yeah, so that'll be perfect. So there's what our two holes look like for reference. And those holes are for running the vacuum lines to that purge solenoid through. So when you remove your intake manifold, this is what it's going to look like, plus or minus the crankcase vent lines. Um, so now we're gonna have to strip this completely down because we are gonna need to modify this bracket to adapt it to the new manifold. So I've already taken the two out of control hose bolts off. So there are two bolts that go right here on it. And once it's off, this guy will just pop right out. We can remove this. I am going to clean this thing thoroughly. Get out inside there and clean all that stuff. Might as well, since we're here. Separate him from the bracket, and he We'll just wiggle off like that. And then we have a few bolts back here. And that bracket will come off. So there's a little tab right there. Push the tab in, that guy will slide out. And now we're done with this, toss it in the bin. So this is the M52 manifold bracket that we pulled off. We will need to modify this bracket to make it work on the M50. So we're gonna cut it here, and we're gonna cut it about here. This whole section of the bracket we don't need anymore, so we're gonna have to go and cut that off to make room for some hoses that are going to be running through there. So the first time I did the manifold conversion, I cut this off literally with a file, and it took forever. I'm using a Sawzall this time, but just know you don't need a Sawzall to do it. You can find other ways to make it work. So this is what your bracket's gonna look like when it's all done. Now we got more room for the hoses that are gonna go back into place. Now we're gonna begin to assemble. We're gonna bolt them down like that. Triangle bracket, bolt through that. Bracket through the top. Nut and bolt down. We're gonna put one on each side. So there we go. Got our little wing brackets on. Tighten on 
those guys down. And there we have the bracket bolted down. From here we're going to install this guy. Now I like to put a little bit of multi-purpose grease on all of my little o-rings and gaskets and points where vacuum connects to just because it gets a little bit better seal to begin with. It also makes them slide on a lot easier. So that fitting is going to go on there. We're going to bolt down our crankcase vent. and our idle air control valve go back on. Now it's time to install the pretty blue hose. So, again, I'm gonna put some multi-purpose grease on all of my fittings. And we're gonna put on our hose clamps. So this part of the hose is gonna wrap around to go on right there this is for our idle control and then we have our crankcase vent all right we're all tied down Giving you a shot of that for reference, just to confirm how it goes. So on the ICV, it's the smaller one. So not the bigger one, but the smaller one that goes towards there. Now the only thing missing from this setup is this guy. This is a manifold support bracket, and it goes somewhere like that. You can install them if you want to. I really don't believe in it because it makes it way more of a pain to pull the manifold back off and honestly they don't really do anything. I've run without these for quite some time on a few of my other cars and I've had zero issues so I don't worry about these. So next thing on the list we have to relocate the idle air temp sensor and we are going to be doing that in this intake air boot. So this is between the throttle body and the mass airflow sensor is where this guy lives and right about here is where we're gonna put that sensor. We gotta drill bit here about the same size as that section of the air sensor. And we're gonna put a hole right there. So I am going to pull this O-ring off. We're gonna clean that up pretty good. I'm gonna smack a little bit of RTV right in that area right there. And I'm going to try and work this in and use the hole that I made for the boot to go where the o-ring was and hopefully that should provide enough of a seal to where it won't leak and keep in mind you do want this hole on the bottom side so it'll be underneath so you won't be able to see it from up top if you're gonna do it this way do be careful not to get any RTV in the sensor itself There we go, it is sitting flush. You can see that top little ridge, and that's the bottom part or the top part of where that O-ring sits. So I pretty much just replaced the O-ring with the boot and threw some RTV on there. Good fitment, we're gonna let that dry for a little while and it should be good to go. All right, so now we're gonna talk about vacuum control and routing for the new manifold. And it's really not that difficult. We only have three vacuum lines in here in total, aside from the manifold setup, which includes the auto control circuit, the CCV, and all that stuff. So line number one is going to come off the secondary air pump. This is for that little solenoid that we drilled the holes for in the manifold. We have the EVAP purge solenoid vacuum line, which is this guy right here. And then we have the fuel pressure regulator, and that is it. The secondary air pump system and the fuel pressure regulator hose, vacuum hose, will be teed into one. And then we have a separate hose for the EVAP. So this T 
gets provided with the kit and the short end here is going to go onto the fuel pressure regulator and then the longer hose is going to go to our check valve and then this hose here, the other hose on that little T that is not plugged in, is going to get plugged in on the manifold right in that guy. So we're going to slip one end of the T like that. The other end is going to go on that check valve. And now when we go to plug the manifold in, we just got to run that over to that little T on the manifold and it'll be good. And you can trim these vacuum lines if you want to because they're pretty long. So I've taken off this hose that was on this guy which is the EVAP purge solenoid. Now on the OBD, on the later model OBD2 cars this is mounted like over here on the intake manifold. It's not necessarily down here. And we're going to replace it with this nice hose that the kit provided. And this guy is going to plug in on that vacuum fitting under the intake manifold. So when we're put on the manifold, you're gonna have to reach in and put that guy on there like that. So we're almost ready to reinstall the intake manifold. A couple things I'm gonna do beforehand is I'm going to clean the mating surfaces for the intake manifold. Which is going to be these guys right here. I'm also going to plug in our fuel rail. Reattach that. And we can install our sexy new intake manifold gaskets. All right, now before we install the intake manifold, I did want to go over kind of the things and the process that we do have to plug in when we're under there just to make sure everything gets plugged in correctly. So there's not a whole lot of stuff to plug in, but you do need to keep it in mind. So number one is the idle air control valve. This is a three prong connector. This is the air temp sensor, similar to that one, except for the OBD1 cars. So nothing goes there, there is no plug for that. Our vacuum line that we teed off from the fuel pressure regulator and the secondary air pump system is going to plug in right there. We do need to plug in the vent line. So this comes off of the oil dipstick tube. There's a little hose that will connect to that guy. So that does need to go on. Your main crankcase vent hose is going to come from here to the valve cover. I don't have that installed. That is that plastic tube right there, but I will be installing that after the manifold is already bolted down. And then our line from the EVAP, that little vacuum line we plugged in, is going to slide down this way and plug into that little vacuum fitting right there. So do make sure to get that plugged in. If you were going to be running throttle cooling lines, you will need to feed those lines through here and then plug them back into the throttle body. So I like to put the manifold in kind of up at an angle so I can get to the stuff under it then I'll plug everything in where it needs to be get the fuel rail on top of it and then we'll put the manifold on and bolt it down so here is the plug for our idle control valve it's probably hanging around somewhere over here our air temp sensor this is our air temp sensor it's a little two prong plug you do need to pull that guy out and set him somewhere over here because we will need to be plugging him onto the boot up there fuel pressure regulator secondary air pump vacuum line that's going to go in there and then the dipstick vent tube is this little tube right here so if you trace the dipstick down you can usually find them just hanging out down there another good thing to remember is to keep the fuel rail on top of the manifold as you're plugging them in if you leave them over here it's going to be a pain make sure the fuel rail harness is sitting up over there and another one is you want to make sure that your oxygen sensors are pulled back over here so that way you're not digging underneath the manifold to find them while you're putting the intake manifold on you are going to need to feed these vacuum lines through the manifold to get it connected and then once the manifold is torqued and bolted down we can reinstall that i'll show you guys how to do that and i am going to be putting a little bit of multi-purpose grease on these manifold gaskets to make sure that they have a little bit of a better chance sealing I also like to tighten the manifold down in a certain sequence, that way it doesn't accidentally get messed up. So I'll put the manifold on, I'll put all the nuts down, run them all down, I will snug them starting from the center out, kind of in a back and forth pattern, and then we're going to go ahead and torque all of them. All right. So I'm going to 
reach in, get my idle control valve plugged in. Let's get our vacuum line plugged in on the back there. Like that. Kind of work the manifold where it needs to be. Now let's plug in this guy. This is our EVAP. If you look down in line with the manifold, you can see him pretty easily. He's plugged in. So now I'm going to start feeding our vacuum lines through. I get the lower one fed like that. I'm going to leave that solenoid off while I torque down the manifold and then we'll put that back on. So I set the manifold where it wants to be and now I'm going to reach in and plug the crankcase vent hose there we go that's plugged in and now I'm going to feed Our PCV hose. Our PCV hose is plugged in. I'm going to leave this kind of loose for now so we'll have room to get to that stud. Everything underneath is plugged in where it should be. So now we can go down, get the manifold set in properly, and start installing our hardware for it. I got them all run down. I'm gonna snug them. Starting from the center out. And these guys get 135 inch pounds. So now we're going to be installing our little fuel rail brackets. So now I'm going to feed my vacuum lines through the lower runner there. And we can plug in our purge solenoid to those vacuum lines. So it's set up like that. <clears throat> so the upper hose is, the upper vacuum line is going this way to the secondary air pump. The lower line is going towards the manifold. And if you can reach in here and kind of pull and adjust them, You can get the uh, the solenoid to sit nicely like that. So now we're going to install all of our injectors. I did rebuild them, regasketed new pencil caps, all that stuff. We're going to install it. And I do like to put a little bit of multi-purpose grease on that O-ring to get it to seal a little bit better. Uh, don't put any up top if you're going to.
and the rail should sit nice and flush in there and the ejector should be almost bottomed out and our fuel rail harness will come up and come back on there we go now this guy is going to plug into our little solenoid down there like that we have this little harness connector that needs to go on the end of the wiring harness All right, crank his vent tube is back on. We can run our oxygen sensors back into place. So the intake manifold and the fuel rail system is back on. So now we're gonna rebolt our dipstick. And right there is a little hole for that. And he's just a little 10 millimeter. So now we're gonna be installing a throttle body. The conversion kit provides a new throttle body gasket. This is a much thicker gasket. The M52 throttle bodies has the gasket in the throttle body and the M50 has it in the manifold. And so the conversion kit has one that does both and it's pretty thick. If you are still running throttle cooling, so you'll have two cooling lines coming out of here. You will need to route them through this little hoop to make that work. I'm not running throttle cooling, so I'm not worried about that. If you don't want to run throttle cooling, you can loop the hose underneath the intake manifold, just loop it back into itself, and then that'll delete it, and then you don't have to worry about that. So we're gonna grease this up and throw the throttle body on. I'm going to re-plug in my throttle position sensor. And I'm going to plug in the brake booster as well. So now we can plug in this boot. Now this guy is going to go into the pipe coming off of the idle control valve. That's that guy right there. And we do need to plug in our air temp sensor. So that is that guy. So I'm going to plug my air temp sensor in. Put the idle control boot on, and then we can install this boot. And now our mass airflow and our airbox can go back on. Alright, our M50 manifold swap is done. So now I'm going to go and reinstall my upper cowl and put my strut brace back on. A couple things to note about the swap. Number one, on initial fire up, it should run fine. It should idle well. If it doesn't, you have a vacuum leak or something else might be unplugged. You need to check that out. It should also not throw a check engine light. The check engine light should be off after the conversion if it's done properly. If it is on, you might have a vacuum leak, you might have something plugged in incorrectly or not plugged in at all, so double check your work. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it fresh, enjoy your newly acquired ponies, and I will see you guys later. Oh, man.